the Blood Ravens are a loyalist chapter of the Adeptus Astartes created during an unknown founding, though the chapter has been documented as existing since at least M37. Despite their relatively short existence, at least as documented within Imperial records, the Blood Ravens have amassed an impressive tally of victories within a number of notable campaigns, most notably the Aurelian Crusades. The chapter somewhat infamously is obsessed with the acquisition of knowledge, which over time has led to the Blood Ravens developing one of the most extensive and detailed historical archives within the entirety of the Adeptus Astartes, which is even said to rival those of the first founding chapters. The chapter's first for knowledge has led to the Blood Ravens developing a close relationship with the Adeptus Mechanicus, due to the tenets of the Mechanicus' own eternal quest for knowledge. This need to obtain information is even partially reflected within the chapter's combat doctrine, where they will study the movements and actions of the enemy for days, weeks, or even months before committing their forces to battle, with their librarians using their powers of divination to plan and account for multiple contingencies. This has even allowed the chapter to rapidly respond to heretical assaults and Xenos invasions before the greater whole of the Imperium becomes aware of them occurring. This has led to some, including at least one other Space Marine chapter, to accuse the Blood Ravens' methods of waging war as being cowardly, though once the chapter engages their foe upon the field of battle, they will fight with a righteous fury and ferocity equal to that of any other chapter of the Adeptus Astartes. While the Blood Ravens are said to follow the spirit of the Codex Astartes, the chapter does not follow its scripture to the letter, diverging from its teachings in multiple areas. One such divergence is shown with the fact that many members of the chapter's librarians will hold a dual rank, such as a company captain also being a librarian, and a number of chapter masters were also known to have simultaneously been the chapter's chief librarians. This is due to a particular anomaly that results in a high proportion of psychers being inducted into the chapter. Despite extensive purity tests undertaken by the Adeptus Mechanicus, there is little evidence to support the notion that this high number of psychers emerging throughout the ranks of the Blood Ravens is as a result of genetic mutation. The earliest days of the Blood Ravens are somewhat of a mystery, with no concrete records existing pertaining to their creation or the identity of their primogenitor Primarch, not even within the chapter's own historical archives. Such records were rumoured to have been deliberately destroyed as opposed to simply being lost. It is this very need to determine the truth of their origins that drives the chapter's goal, if not obsessive need to acquire knowledge, particularly that regarding their genetic heritage. So which of the original first founding legions could the Blood Ravens be descended from? Rumours have arisen that the chapter could be descended from the Dark Angels Legion and their Primarch, Lionel Johnson. There is little to support this possibility, however, outside of general rumour and hearsay, such as those detailed within the Blood Ravens entry of the Index Astartes articles. While not impossible, it would appear to be highly unlikely due to a number of other first founding legions having potentially stronger links, and thus making them far more likely to be the forefathers of the chapter. The next potential possibility is that the Blood Ravens are descended from the Blood Angels Legion and the Primarch Sanguinius. This is primarily due to both chapters having similar names, Heraldry, which is a winged blood drop in the case of the Blood Angels, and a blood drop superimposed over a raven for the Blood Ravens, and colour schemes, with both chapters favouring the colour red. These traits are commonly shared between the Blood Angels and many of their successor chapters, as documented by the Flesh Terrors, Blood Drinkers, and Angels Vermilion. The main problem with this possibility, however, is that there have been no documented incidents of the Black Rage or the Red Thirst, the primary gene seed flaws of the Blood Angels occurring within the ranks of the Blood Ravens. 
While this would appear to disprove any potential links between the Blood Ravens and the Blood Angels, it is worth mentioning that the Lamentus chapter initially showed no signs of the Black Rage, with the flaw only beginning to manifest during the course of the Badab War. As such, there is still a possibility, albeit an incredibly small one, that the Blood Ravens have yet to have these flaws manifest within their own particular stock of gene seed. The next possibility is that the Blood Ravens are descended from the Raven Guard Legion and their Primarch, Corvus Corax. The reasoning behind this is similar to that previously mentioned with the theoretical connection between the Blood Ravens and the Blood Angels. Both chapters share heavy use of Raven iconography within their heraldry, as well as the use of Raven within their chapter name. This use of avian imagery is also prevalent within a number of Raven Guard successor chapters, such as the Raptors, Knights of the Raven, and the Necropolis Hawks. However, this link between the Blood Ravens and Raven Guard is tenuous at best for a number of reasons. The first of which is that there is a substantial number of chapters who also make heavy use of avian imagery, most notably the Hawk Lords, who while initially rumoured to be a Raven Guard successor chapter in Imperial Armour Volume 8, have been confirmed to be an Ultramarine successor chapter within multiple editions of Codex Space Marines. Secondly, the Blood Ravens do not appear to share any of the Gene Seed deficiencies displayed by the Raven Guard. The Raven Guard bear a number of pronounced flaws within their genetic sequence, including that of a missing Betcher's gland and mucronoid organs. In addition, the melanchromic organ of the Raven Guard causes those who bear the Gene Seed of Corvus Corax to develop deathly pale complexions while their hair and eyes darken until they are an oily black in colour. The Battle Brothers of the Blood Ravens, by contrast, sport a variety of skin tones and hair colours, which would appear to debunk any potential genetic links between them and the Raven Guard. The next possibility is that the primogenitor of the Blood Ravens is the Imperial Fists Legion and their Primarch, Rogal Dawn. This is due to a particular relic that is within the possession of the Blood Ravens chapter, a weapon known as Rogal's Fist, a power mace that was said to have been forged by Rogal Dawn himself. Because of this, it stands to reason that the Blood Ravens could theoretically be an Imperial Fist successor chapter due to the fact that other successor chapters are in possession of artifacts that once belonged to their Primarch. The Crimson Fist chapter, for example, once possessed a relic known as the Scepter of Sacred Blood, which contained within it the very blood of Rogal Dawn. In fact, there is even a possibility that the Blood Ravens could be third generation descendants of the Imperial Fists, being descended from a previously established Imperial Fist successor chapter. The reasoning behind this particular hypothesis is due to the weapon possessed by the Blood Ravens known as the Doom of Apostasy, a thunder hammer that once belonged to High Marshal Signandus of the Black Templars chapter, who are also the gene sons of Rogal Dawn. If this were indeed the case, then it would be extremely ironic for the Blood Ravens to have been sired by this particular chapter, due to the Black Templars lack of psychers within their own ranks. But much like the previous hypotheses, this possibility is not without its flaws. The Blood Ravens are rather infamous, even to the point of mockery, for having within their reliquary a number of artifacts belonging to a host of other Imperial organisations, including that of the Iron Snakes chapter, Adeptus Sororitas, and even the Adeptus Custodes. As a result, it's entirely possible that the Blood Ravens could have acquired these Dornian artifacts through some alternate means, as opposed to simply inheriting them as a result of any genetic link. In addition, there do not appear to be any documented instances of the Blood Ravens lacking the Betcher's gland and Susan membrane implants, both of which are missing within Dornian gene seed. The final first founding legion that could be the potential primogenitors of the Blood Ravens is that of the Thousand Sons Legion and their Primarch, Magnus the Red. 
This is due to a large amount of circumstantial evidence that alludes to the possibility of the Blood Ravens being the sons of Magnus. The first of which is due to the similarities between the Blood Ravens and Thousand Sons in regards to battle doctrine, due to both forces sporting a disproportionately high number of psychers compared to other divisions of the Astartes. The librarians of the Thousand Sons, much like the modern day Blood Ravens, were sometimes known to hold a dual rank within their legion. Azak Araman, for example, held both the rank of First Captain and Chief Librarian. Within the Thousand Sons, this high manifestation of psychic ability is a result of a particular quirk found within their gene seed, though according to Index Astartes, there appears to be no biological reason as to why the Blood Ravens also display a high number of psychers within their ranks. The second piece of potential evidence is due to the iconography of the Blood Ravens being evocative of the Thousand Suns Corvidae cult, as demonstrated by the Red Armor and the use of a raven or crow as their respective sigils, although the symbol of the Corvidae cult is that of a raven's head as opposed to an entire bird. The strongest piece of supporting evidence, however, comes from the novel A Thousand Suns. The psyker known as Callista Eris, who was well known for her divination and prophetic dreams, would be induced into experiencing a number of intense visions regarding the fate of the Thousand Sons. One such vision would suggest a connection between the Legion and the future Blood Ravens chapter, as detailed with the following quote. It's too late! The wolf is at the door and it hungers for blood! Oh, no, the blood! The ravens, I see them too! The lost sons and a raven of blood! They cry out for salvation and knowledge, but it is denied! A brother betrayed, a brother murdered! The worst mistake for the noblest reason! Uh, it cannot happen, but it must! Uh, the Raven of Blood would initially appear to be alluding to the modern-day Blood Ravens, and the cries for salvation and knowledge foreseen by Callista does indeed appear to be referring to the inherent thirst for information displayed by the chapter, particularly, as mentioned earlier, in regards to their origins. Additional potential evidence comes from the novel Dawn of War, Tempest. When Azek Araman and his prodigal son's warband encountered the amnesiac Blood Ravens librarian, Rama, Araman would state to the librarian that he knew the being known as Azariah Vidya better than he would expect. Azariah Vidya was a figure of great importance within the records of the Blood Ravens, one that was stated to be the great father of the chapter and is the earliest known member of the Blood Ravens to hold the dual position of Chapter Master and Chief Librarian. Despite this claim, Rama was unable to shake the feeling that the Sorcerer was lying to him. Azariah was also the alleged author of a text known as The Unfounding, with a copy also making its way into Araman's possession. The cover of this tome was notable for being embossed with the heraldry of the Blood Ravens. Furthermore, Araman would frequently refer to Rama as being a lost brother, and would later state the following to the Blood Raven. There was a time long ago before the change, when the thousand sons of Magnus the Red wore the blood red armor of their Primarch. Times change, everything changes, and we have changed. This is one of the constant laws of our chaotic times. The key is to learn how to control the changes, how to master them and transform them to your own advantage. You really think that it is coincidence that the librarians of your Blood Ravens wear the blue armor of the Prodigal Sons and the rubric of Araman? We are seekers of truth, 
friend of Araman, we need only ever confront each other with our minds. While these claims made by Araman could indeed be taken as further evidence to support the connection between the Blood Ravens and the Thousand Sons, it is worth noting that Araman's statements could be little more than an attempt to manipulate and eventually recruit Rama into becoming a member of the Prodigal Sons warband. As such, the veracity of his claims is debatable at best. Not only this, but some have claimed that the Blood Ravens are descended from the remnants of the Thousand Sons Four Fellowship, which was sent away from their world prior to the events of the burning of Prospero. However, the majority of the Four Fellowship would return to Prospero following its scouring, only to be butchered by warriors from the World Eaters Traitor Legion, with the only survivor being Sergeant Revial Arvada. Arvada, after accompanying the White Scars Legion to Terra, would be infused with a soul fragment belonging to Magnus the Red, which would transform him into a being known as Janus, who would become the first Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights chapter. As such, there would appear to be no direct link between the Four Fellowship of the Thousand Sons and the modern day Blood Ravens. Yet, despite the amount of evidence that would still appear to support the prospect of the Blood Ravens being successors of the Thousand Sons, there are indeed a number of issues that would appear to discredit this possibility. The first of which is due to the fact that the gene seed of the Blood Ravens does not show any evidence of the flaws found within the genetic stock of the Thousand Sons. The first of which being the flesh change a genetic flaw that causes spontaneous and uncontrollable mutations, which can range from sprouting additional limbs, eyes, or even spontaneous combustion. As stated earlier within the Blood Ravens entry within Index Astartes, the Blood Ravens gene seed has been deemed relatively stable with little evidence of mutation. This is also reinforced by the fact that the high propensity of psychers manifesting within the Blood Ravens, according to the Adeptus Mechanicus, does not appear to be the result of any genetic abnormality or quirk. While many of the more psychically sensitive aspirants that undergo the induction process to join the chapter's librarius do sometimes become racked by mutation, this is due to the particular trials undertaken by prospective librarians as opposed to being a genetic flaw. It is implied within Index Astartes that such trials include exposure to the many horrors of the warp in order to prove that future librarians are strong enough to resist the predations of demonic entities. Those that fail are typically executed, but those who undergo extreme mutation are locked away within a prison known simply as the Tower, where the members of the chapter's librarius will study these abominations in order to understand why certain aspirants fail in their trials. The second problem is that of the Rubric, a spell that was cast by Azek Araman in an attempt to permanently purge the flesh change from the gene seed of the Thousand Sons. The most psychically potent members of the Legion were seemingly cured, but those whose powers were weaker were turned into dust, their souls trapped within their armor that had now been sealed by magic and transformed into mindless automata called Rubric Marines. This spell has even been shown to affect members of the Legion that remained outside the boundaries of time and space for thousands of years. As detailed within the novel Ashes of Prospero, a company of Heresy-era Thousand Sons would continue to fight in the defense of their world within the portal maze of Prospero, a location that existed beyond the reach of time itself, against the Space Wolves of the 13th Great Company. These time-displaced Thousand Sons would immediately succumb to the rubric as soon as they emerged from the maze into the present day, as detailed with the following passage. The lead squad of Thousand Sons stepped out of the breach, surrounded by an aura of azure power, the Vexilor at their head holding high the icon of his company. The portal's crackle was lost in the crash of boots striding in unison. The order to open fire was on Njarl's lips, the staff in his hand gleaming with psychic power as he readied bolts of vengeance. The Vexilor faltered in his next step, 
and the legionary to his right stumbled also. The creak of armor and the steady step replaced with a clutter of banging ceramite as one warrior tottered into another. As though suddenly finding the footing unstable, the whole squad staggered, their perfect coordination lost within two strides. The icon crashed against the tiles from the standard bearer's fingers, even as his legs buckled and he plunged face first to the floor. The rest of the squad collapsed likewise, not with any great flailing or drama, simply lowering to their knees and then falling face down. One of the legionary's helmet's lenses caught the edges of a dropped bolter and cracked open. White dust spilled from the gash, sparkling for a moment with weird power before the escaping soul dissipated, leaving only a drift of ash-like residue. Niao laughed hoarsely. Dust. All oh, this dust. As a result, this would strongly imply that, unless subjected to extensive genetic manipulation and modification, those implanted with the gene seed of Magnus the Red will also succumb to the effects of the rubric, suggesting that if the Blood Ravens were indeed descended from the 15th Legion, then the majority of the chapter would also have had their bodies turned to dust. Alternatively, perhaps the Blood Ravens gene seed is chimeric in nature, having been spliced together from a number of differing sources. This isn't entirely outside the realm of possibility, as it has been implied that the very reason behind the founding of the Blood Ravens was to combat against a specific threat, one that had long since been defeated. Indeed, a chapter having their gene seed being tailor-made to combat against a particularly stubborn or dangerous foe would make a degree of logical sense. Ultimately, while we may never know the truth of the matter, the Blood Ravens themselves will continue to undertake their quest for knowledge for centuries to come. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.